We asked Dr. Bronson Strickland how far bucks travel during the rut, what are the behaviors, and how it can help you tag a buck this fall. Listen to Dr. Bronson. There's some really cool GPS uh, data that is backing up his statements, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get right into it. Here we go. Now, there's this other conception that, that bucks will travel miles and miles to find the next hot doe. What can you say to that? And I, once again, it comes down to the individual, but I guess, is there any trends that people could have in the back of their mind? I, I, I think that's going to be not to get too technical here, but I, th I think it's going to be based on the distribution of does on the landscape. So let's just create a, maybe a too simplistic of, a, of an example. If, if cover is very limited on the landscape, so we got a cover patch here that holds a lot of deer and we've got to go 3000 yards, but miles or two to find another significant cover patch that holds more deer and holds more does, then yeah, you're going to see a lot more longer movements of those bucks circulating in more of a southeastern context where we're typically not cover limited. I don't think you would see those extreme distances simply because they don't have to. It's more uh, homogeneous on the landscape, the distribution of deer. So they're still going to be zigzagging around and looking for that estrus doe, but they probably don't have to go as far. So to, to summarize it, it just really comes down to how hard is it to find the next doe and how much, you know, how split up they are. If you're in, let's say a Kansas where cover is very limited and they do have to travel far and it's easy to travel for them to go far versus uh, different settings. So it's, yeah. So we like to think that bucks are going to be navigating the landscape, uh, probably heat checking, you know, literally just getting downwind heat checking groups of deer, and they're just going to keep moving until it probably they find one sufficient that they're going to start the tending process and the courtship process and so forth. Even within that, after I said all that, there's so much variation in what, what we're kind of calling buck movement personality. So, you know, pre-rut, rut, after the rut, you've got some of these bucks we know because we have a collar on them that are going extreme distances. Some of them are more or less staying in their home home range and it's just like a pinball within their home range. Some of them get up and move and some of them may get up and move five miles away. But that's literally, or excuse me, that that's generally only about from our samples, that's less than 30%. Most 70-ish percent typically follow the norm traditionally of I've got this home range and I stay within the confines of that home range and occasionally have an excursion mm -hmm. outside of that home range that we think is either looking for better food, better cover or breeding opportunities. I wish we could ask deer why you're doing <laughs> what you're doing, but that's, that's kind of what, what we think is going on. It'd make your life a lot easier. <laughs> it should be. Yeah. But I might not have a job either. <laughs> True. Yeah. Job security. So yeah. when some of these bucks that go on excursions, how often, or how, is there a general duration of how long they are going on an excursion? Is it a week? Is it two weeks? Does it depend once it, again? Yeah. It, and so it kind of gets into some of the ways you define it. We kind of define an excursion as it's kind of like a weekend trip or an overnight trip. And it's usually less than 24 hours and sometimes only about 12 hours. But when you plot the data, there's this distinct little marker where they have, they have left for a few hours and gone a few miles away and they come back. So it's an aberration of their normal movement. Again, kind of on the continuum, then you have some that what initially appeared to be an excursion, they stay for a, a longer period of time. And we're kind of calling that a shift. They have temporarily shifted their home range for a week, a month, you know, or several months. Um, so it's just all kind of a continuum that, um, Sometimes they'll leave for a day or two or an hour or two. Sometimes they leave for a month or two. Which oftentimes uh, leaves people asking more questions uh, when they get pictures of a big deer on camera. Like, what the heck? He was here and then he was gone. Or maybe uh, the situation where they do shift and you're really excited because he stuck around. That's one of the fun things, I guess, of being the, a deer These GPS callers have perfectly explained what people have been seeing on cameras. Hunters have seen that for years. And, uh, you know, uh, us and other people do. We kind of have the data like, yep, that indeed, that is going on. And it's also fascinating too. The hunters always said with trail camera data that I really didn't buy into initially was that here's what's really odd. We always see this buck and it's always at this time. It's always this week, you know, every about around the middle of October, we either start seeing it or we no longer see it. And the GPS data confirmed that, that a lot of these bucks that are shifting their home range, 
you know, miles and miles away, they pretty much follow that calendar. And they might be following the same photo period calendar we talked about earlier for does when they come into heat. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they time it, but they do. And it's pretty reliable. 